Russia is going to build the first micro and PP. These nuclear power plants will create conditions for the efficient development of the energy system of remote regions. Their introduction will make not only the operation of the station itself, but also the process of logistics of the necessary fuel cheaper. What are the main advantages of micro NPPs, and why can they become an important position in Russia's energy exports? Let's look into it. Rosatom, the Ministry of Economic Development and the Ministry of Finance are working on the construction of so-called micro NPPs by July 1st. According to the government's website, the facility's activities will be part of the new nuclear power initiative, including small nuclear reactors for remote areas. This involves the construction of a low power plant with the Shell M reactor unit and the development of design documentation for the Elena AEM nuclear thermal power plant. In addition, the agencies will have to develop a plan to develop the export potential of such NPPs. This part of the order must be implemented no later than July 15th. The main task of Shell FEM is local autonomous supply of the consumer. The thermal capacity of such a plant is about 35 megawatts. The electrical capacity is 10 megawatts. Curiously, these micro NPPs are easily scalable by accommodating additional power capsules with reactor units. The first plant is expected to appear in Chukaka and will provide energy for gold mining at the Savanea deposit. In turn, Elena AEM is a pilot nuclear thermoelectric heating plant. It is needed to provide energy in remote and hard-to-reach regions where there is no centralized power supply. The thermal capacity of the facility is expected to be 7 megawatts, while the electrical capacity of the thermoelectric generator is at least 200 kilowatts. The very idea of building small nuclear power plants is not new. For example, in 2020, Russia's first floating nuclear thermal power plant, Academic Lomonosov, was commissioned. The combined capacity of its two reactors is about 60 megawatts of electricity. It provides power to one of the towns in the Chukaka Autonomous Okrug and is to replace the Bariba nuclear plant, which is about to expire. The expert community notes that the construction of new stations will significantly improve the energy system of remote Russian regions. In addition, serious export opportunities are opening up for Moscow. States that have hard-to-reach island regions within their borders may be interested in the Shelf M project. Micro NPPs include all plants whose capacity does not exceed 250 megawatts. These micro NPPs will give remote areas fuel self-sufficiency. The regions of the Far East and Siberia are very dependent on the so-called northern importation, which must be carried out constantly. This involves the supply of diesel fuel as well as fuel oil for electricity and heat generation. The move to smaller facilities will help establish one-time transportation of uranium and reactors to needed regions. This element has a low weight. As a consequence, micro NPPs, through cheaper logistics of the necessary fuel, will prove to be much more efficient. An example is again the floating station PATPP Academic Lomonosov, which has been successfully operating in Chicago for several years. It is currently being partially reloaded, using a specialized vessel for this purpose. Such nuclear power plants would likely be centralized through the efforts of a single plant for fuel fabrication, reprocessing, and subsequent disposal. Lomonosov is a classic mini-NPP that covers the needs of the entire Chunsky district and continental transmission lines. And microstations such as Shelfim can supply power to a small shift camp or metallurgical or mining facilities. Also in the future, micro-NPPs can be exported to island territories without their own energy sources. It is not realistic everywhere to build a storage hydroelectric plant that would operate after sunset. Therefore, the option with small stations looks extremely attractive. Or, for example, it is long and expensive to extend a power line to remote corners of Russia. Diesel generators and solar panels will not be able to cover the energy needs either. Small nuclear power plants in such conditions are able to provide light to both ordinary consumers and mining enterprises. They have the same operating principle as conventional nuclear facilities, but the small variant differs in the type of reactor. In addition, the capacity of micro NPPs could be adjusted by placing additional energy capsules with reactor units. And also from the already operating Lomonosov Academy, the new stations will be distinguished by lower production costs. The fact is that the production of serial samples requires much lower costs than the creation of a single experimental NPP. Well, there's more great news. Turkey gave Rosatom the construction of the second NPP Sanab, and the company's Western lobbyists once again missed the mark. Turkey may become one of the major exporters of energy resources in the near future. This is evidenced by its plans to build nuclear power plants in the country. Russian specialists and scientists are helping the Turks in this endeavor. 
Turkey is one of the countries where energy consumption is increasing every year, while the state is striving to reduce its dependence on imported gas and coal. The country has a good chance of succeeding on this issue. In 2024, the first unit of the AKUIU nuclear power plant, which has been under construction by Rosatom since 2018, will start operating. Turkey gave the second large-scale Sinop NPP construction project to the same company. Erdogan, in his meeting with Putin, said, We have a goal to build three nuclear power plants. I asked Vladimir Putin if we could build the remaining two nuclear plants together. Then together with the Sakuyu NPP, we will have three nuclear power plants. When it comes to the concrete things on which the future of the Turkish state depends, Erdogan can be uncompromising and ruthless. Here is the second nuclear power plant that slowly went into Rosatom's piggy bank, leaving American, European, and Asian companies with their noses to the grindstone. More precisely consortiums, individual companies there have long been unable to build anything, and the entire scientific and technical base has long degraded. Whereas in Russia, it is exactly the opposite. Vladimir Putin said at the Russian Energy Week on October 11, 23, quote, The Russian Engineering School for Construction and Maintenance of Nuclear Power Facilities is not just strong, but has virtually no competitors at the world level. At present, Rosatom specialists are simultaneously building 22 nuclear power plant units abroad, which accounts for about 80% of the global market. Turkish authorities were considering several global companies for the construction of the Sinop nuclear power plant. For example, in May 2013, the Turks signed a deal with Japan to build a second nuclear power plant. The French company Areva and Turkey's IOAS may have had stakes in the construction of the NPP. The first unit of the nuclear power plant was scheduled to be operational by 2023 and the final fourth unit by 2028. The contract collapsed due to economic problems in Turkey and stricter security requirements of the Japanese company. In 2014, the Turks entered talks with China's CNPTC and US-based Westinghouse to build a third nuclear power plant with four units. The nuclear power plant was scheduled to start up in 2023, but the project was put on hold. The construction of the Akuyu and Sinop NPPs proved to be a priority for the country. In February 2023, the Korean Electric Power Corporation KEPCO submitted an application to Turkey to build four nuclear reactors for a new nuclear power plant, but something didn't work out here either. According to experts, none of the world's companies has been able to build a nuclear power plant in recent decades without violating deadlines and technologies. Only a Chinese company stands out here, but it cannot compete with Rosatom yet. Besides, when nuclear power plants are built by China, only the Chinese work. There is no question of training and attracting local personnel to the main construction site. Perhaps the Turkish government, taking into account all these risks, as well as Rosatom's vast experience and its own scientific developments, gave the Russian company the rights to build a second NPP in the country. Alexei Likachev, CEO of the state corporation, said at the government hour in the Russian state Duma, President Erdogan publicly announced that a political decision has been made to transfer another site to us. We are now at the stage of learning the details. The nuclear power plant will be located in Sanaa province on the Black Sea coast. For the construction, it is planned to attract investments in the amount of $40 billion. The plant will consist of four nuclear power units with a total capacity of 4,560 megawatts. This nuclear power plant will be the second in the country after the first nuclear power plant AKUYU, which is located in Mersin province. Here construction works are proceeding according to the planned schedule. Sanap NPP will be similar in technical characteristics to Akuyu NPP. Turkish Minister of Energy and Natural Resources at the plenary session of the Adam Expo Forum on March 24, 25 said, We want to expand our cooperation with Rosatom including on the Sanat project. With the start of this project, Rosatom's order portfolio will increase by four more power units, making the total number 37. And there were no competitors, and I don't see any. So, despite active lobbying and political pressure, the West cannot even get such commercial projects off the table.